Soul is Pixar's latest and, in my opinion, most thought-provoking movie yet. I never thought I'd say this, but Pixar has finally created a film that rivals the cinematic mastery of Ratatouille. With its physical setting taking place in the heart of New York City, Soul breathes life into the city in a way that's almost as masterful as Ratatouille's Paris. But aside from the incredibly immersive world building that Pixar is known for, Soul stands out for its story. The plot dives into the essence of life itself, as it explores what exactly it is that gives a soul its spark. But first, let's start with some context. The movie opens in a band room filled with off-key tunes to set the scene for the life of Joe Gardner, a middle school music teacher whose lifelong dream is to become a jazz musician. One day, Joe is presented with the opportunity of a lifetime to perform alongside jazz legend Dorothea Williams. But just when Joe is about to get his big break, he falls into a manhole and his soul is taken to the great beyond, a mysterious, abstract place that simultaneously looks like an abyss and a stairway to heaven. But we won't get into that in this video. As soon as Joe realizes where he is, he immediately wants to go back to his previous life. In a desperate attempt to return, he takes a leap and ends up in the great before, where unborn souls are prepped for a life on Earth. From there, Joe teams up with a cynical unborn soul named 22 to reclaim the life of his dreams, which has just slipped through his fingers. As they have done time and time again, Pixar brings to life a story that can make anyone's emotions bubble to the surface, whether you're a child or a full-grown adult. While Pixar has a history of illuminating themes of passion, purpose, and finding your place in this world, what's special about Soul is that it's not afraid to wander into heavy philosophical territory in order to do so. By doing this, Soul is able to take a deeper dive into what it means to live a full life in a world full of lost souls. The two primary schools of thought that Soul touches on are, one, determinism, which is the doctrine that all events, including human action, are ultimately determined by causes external to the will, and two, existentialism, a philosophical approach which emphasizes the existence of the individual as a free and responsible agent determining their own development through acts of free will. While there's a deterministic quality about the way souls are given personalities and matched up with life-altering mentors in the great before, nearly everything else about the movie appears to offset this philosophy, as characters not only act with the sense of free will, but even emphasize the importance of exercising this ability in a way that is undeniably existential in nature. Before we get lost in the sauce of these two philosophies, let's just leave it at this. Soul confronts the meaning of life head on. But because this is a Pixar film, the writers had to find a way to gently introduce these deeper, potentially darker topics to the highly impressionable young minds that make up a huge chunk of their audience. And that's where Soul excels. From the minimalistic contours and gradients that make up the great before, to the familiar softness of Pixar's animation style, Soul masters the art of balancing the lighthearted and the existential. In doing so, the film nudges viewers to take a closer look at what gives life its spark, thereby transcending the trope that we have to find our purpose and pursue it with a passion in order to achieve fulfillment in life. While Joe is dead set on overcoming any obstacle that stands in the way of his lifelong dream, his partner, 22, has a much more open-minded approach to the mission. As 22 ends up in Joe's body, and Joe finds himself in the body of a cat, Joe's tunnel vision is juxtaposed with the indiscriminate sense of wonderment that 22 develops while on Earth. As Joe hurries from place to place to get ready for the show, 22 stops at each corner to savor the moments of novelty that cross her path. We see this happening when Connie, one of Joe's students, knocks at his door to announce that she's quitting the trumpet. Joe's first instinct is to shoo her away in order to save time. Meanwhile, 22 sits and listens to her jaded rant, and she really listens, closely enough to realize that deep down, Connie does care about the trumpet and has the potential to be a great musician. When Joe wants to get in and out of his haircut appointment, 22 takes the chance to learn more about Des the Barber, reaching an understanding about Des's life which Joe had only scratched the surface of before. From the way she soaked up every note in the Subway Singer's song, to the sheer magic she found in a falling propeller seed, 22 saw everything from the lens of a newborn baby during her time on Earth. However, her perspective was far more refined than that of a newborn baby's 
because she had the wisdom of thousands of mentors before her and access to Joe's mind and body. And yet, equipped with several lifetimes worth of wisdom and knowledge, 22 found her spark by simply experiencing life herself. What begins as a movie about passion eventually turns into a more granulated look at life, with the spotlight pointed at the little moments that make us fall in love with it. Moments as simple as savoring a slice of pizza or observing the beauty that's all around us. From beginning to end, this film is simply teeming with life. Set in two realities that could not be more different, Soul blends the real world of New York City and the hypothetical realm of the great before, in a story that strikes the perfect balance between lighthearted and existential, a marriage that makes this film, in my opinion, a timeless masterpiece. Through their journey together, Joe and 22 teach us to take a step back and reevaluate the perspective with which we see the world and thereby live our lives. Oftentimes, it is not wisdom, passion, or purpose that we are missing, but rather the permission to simply live and appreciate the life that's all around us. It's a perspective that all children are born with, but one that we lose sight of over time. As discovered by Joe and 22, the elusive spark that we all chase has always been right there in front of us. Congratulations on making it to the very end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, make sure to subscribe so that you can stay posted on more videos like these. This was one of my very first video essays, and I had a lot of fun making it, so I definitely plan on making more videos like these in the future. Stay posted and have an amazing new year.